what's going on everybody welcome back to my youtube channel look at this nice and beautiful question on the board that we're going to be solving and the question says find the values of x for which x squared minus 5 is equal to the square root of x plus 5. well our first step will be for us to get rid of this square root. And we do that by taking the square of both sides. So for the left hand side, I have x squared minus five. I'm gonna be taking the square of the left hand side equal to, for the right hand side, I have the square root of x plus five. I'm also going to take the square of the right hand side. Now notice that this square cancel off the square root. Now for the left hand side, it is of the form a minus b all squared. And this can be expanded as a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Now notice that a is in the form of x squared. So a is in the form of x squared and b is in the form of 5, so equal to 5. So now let's expand this like this. So this is a squared, that's x squared, which is our a, and I'm going to square it, minus 2 times a times b, 2 times a, a is x squared times b, b is 5 plus b squared that's 5 squared equal to x plus 5 so x plus 5 now let's simplify what we have on the left hand side now notice that from indices powers multiply so 2 times 2 gives 4 so this becomes x to the 4 minus 2 times x squared times 5, that's 10x squared, plus 5 squared is 25, equal to x plus 5. Our next step will be for us to move what we have on the right hand side to the left hand side. So this becomes x to the 4 minus 10 x squared now when i move x to the left hand side it becomes minus x then i have plus 25 and when i move 5 to the left hand side it becomes minus 5 equal to 0. now let's simplify further so we have x to the 4 minus 10 x squared minus x now 25 minus 5 is 20 and this is equal to 0. so we have a quartic equation now notice that this quartic equation does not have a cubic and this is where it gets interesting most students give up when they get to this point but I'm going to show you a simple way that you can get through this. Let's do that on the next slide. Well, a quartic equation without a cubic can be factorized as x squared plus x plus b times x squared minus x plus q. So let's expand this and thereafter compared to what we have here. So an expanding, I have x squared times this expression, x squared minus x plus q, plus I have x times this expression, x squared minus x plus q, and then plus p times this same expression, x squared minus x plus q. Now let's expand. 
So x squared times x squared is x to the fourth minus x squared times x, that's x cubed, plus x squared times q, that's qx squared, plus x times x squared, that's x cubed, minus x times x is x squared, plus x times q, that's qx, plus p times x squared, that's px squared, minus p times x is px, and then plus p times q is pq. Now notice that negative x cubed can go off with plus x cubed. So we have x to the fourth. Now I'm going to be writing out the terms with x squared first. So this is plus qx squared. This is minus x squared, so minus x squared. And this is plus px squared, so plus px squared. Now I'm going to be writing out the terms with x, so plus qx and then minus px, so minus px. Then lastly, plus pq. Our next step will be for us to factor out x squared from here and x from here. So we have x to the fourth plus, now factoring out x squared, so this is x squared, plus, I'll do the same thing here, I'll factor out x from here, and then plus pq. So now let's write out the coefficient of x squared, since we factor out x squared. The coefficient of x squared here is q minus, the coefficient of x squared here is 1, plus the coefficient of x squared here is p. Now for x, the coefficient of x here is q minus, the coefficient of x here is p. So you notice that this quartic equation has this factorization. So our next step will be for us to compare this quartic equation to what we have here, since both do not have cubic. Now starting with the coefficient of x squared, so the coefficient of x squared here is q minus 1 plus p. Let's compare this to the coefficient of x squared here. The coefficient of x squared here is negative 10, so this is equal to negative 10. So this is 1. So for the coefficient of x, we have q minus p. Let's compare this to the coefficient of x here. This is negative 1, so negative 1. And lastly, for the constant term, we have pq from here. Let's compare this to the constant term here. We have 20. Now, let's solve these three equations on the next slide. Now, for this first equation, I'm going to be moving negative 1 to the right-hand side so that I have q plus p to be equal to negative 10. As negative 1 crosses to the right, it becomes plus 1, thereby resulting to n plus p. Thereby resulting to q plus p to be equal to negative 10 plus 1, that's negative 9. So let me call this equation 1. Now I'm going to be picking this second equation, which is q minus p equal to negative 1, and I'll call it equation 2. Our next step will be for us to add these two equations. So equation 1 plus equation 2. Then q plus q, that's 2q, and p 
plus minus b is zero equal to now negative nine plus negative one that's negative ten our next step will be for us to divide both sides by two in order to get the value of q so divide the left hand side by two divide the right hand side by two so two can cancel off two leaving behind q to be equal to now negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5 so we've got the value for q to be equal to negative 5. now to get the value for p we can put the value of q in either of this equation equation 1 equation 2 or equation 3. well i'll choose this equation because it looks simpler so p times q remember q is negative 5 is equal to 20. we can divide both sides by negative 5 to get the value for p so divide the left hand side by negative 5 also divide the right hand side by negative 5. so negative 5 can cancel off negative 5 leaving behind p to be equal to now 20 divided by negative 5 is negative 4. so we've got the value of q to be negative 5 and we've also got the value of p to be negative 4. now recall that the factorization to our quartic equation is x squared plus x plus p times x squared minus x plus q now substituting the value for p and q we have x squared plus x plus p that will be negative 4 times x squared minus x plus q which is negative 5 and this is equal to 0. so we have two cases we have x squared plus x minus 4 to be equal to 0 and we have x squared minus x minus 5 to be equal to 0. let's solve this two quadratic equation on the next slide so the two cases we have are x squared plus x minus 4 equal to 0 or the other case is x squared minus x minus 5 equal to 0. now let's use the quadratic formula to solve this so looking at this expression we have a to be 1 b to be 1 and c to be negative 4. now the quadratic formula is we're looking for x so x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a now let's substitute into the quadratic formula so we have x to be equal to negative b that's negative 1 plus or minus the square root of b squared that's 1 squared is 1 minus 4ac that's 4 times a times c 4 times a times c so 4 times a times c c is negative 4 all over 2a that's 2 times 1. so this simplifies into x to be equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 now minus times minus gives plus 4 times 1 times 4 is 16 all over 2 times 1 is 2. so this simplifies finally into x to be equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 16 is 17 all over 2. so there are two values for x here we have x to be equal to negative 1 plus the square root of 17 all over 2 
or x is equal to negative 1 minus the square root of 17 all over 2. Now let's solve for the second case. This is the first value for x and this is the second value for x. Focusing on the second case on the next slide. Now for this second case, we're still going to be using a quadratic formula. So a from here is 1, b is negative 1, and c is negative 5. So the quadratic formula, as we're looking for x, is x equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now let's substitute. So x is equal to negative b, b is negative 1, plus or minus the square root of negative 1 squared minus 4 times a times c, that's 4 times a is 1, c is negative 5, all over 2a, that's 2 times 1, since a is equal to 1. So x will be equal to minus times minus is plus, so that's positive 1, plus or minus the square root of. Now, negative 1 squared is 1. Minus times minus is plus. So 4 times 1 times 5 is 20. All over 2 times 1 is 2. So this simplifies into a final result for x to be equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 20 is 21 all over 2. So there are two values for x here. We have the third value for x to be 1, taking the positive, plus the square root of 21 all over 2. Then the fourth value for x is 1, now, taking the negative value is minus the square root of 21 all over 2. Now, recall that from the given equation, we have x squared minus 5 to be equal to the square root of x plus 5. Notice that the right-hand side is a positive integer. So, that means x squared minus 5 is a positive integer and from our solution we're going to be having a positive integer here when we substitute x here we have a positive integer so this is a tick but when we substitute 1 minus the square root of 21 over 2 for x here we are going to be having a negative integer so this is rejected now let's go back to the remaining two roots we got first. Remember, x squared minus 5 is a positive integer. So substituting this value for x, we give negative integer. So I'm going to be rejecting this as well. But when I substitute this for x, I get a positive integer. So this is a tick. So we have two solutions for the given question. Well, feel free to share your ideas in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video and have learned something from this video, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos. And like I always say, until next time, take care.